Hey there, in this video I'll be talking about how you're probably using ISO wrong for shooting video. And no, this is not clickbait. There's a lot of misunderstandings about ISO and I want to clarify a lot of that stuff and give you a deeper understanding of it. I also have some tips and tricks that I want to share with you later on in this video to help you eke out a little bit more image quality in certain situations and I am using one of those right now but they'll come later on in the video. So before we get into this, huge disclaimer, a lot of the stuff I'm going to be talking about in this video, they're more advanced techniques, they're not beginner stuff. So I just want to have a disclaimer that if you don't fully understand how to get proper exposure in your camera, you can easily under or overexpose the image, causing more noise or damage to the image. So keep that in mind. Now that I hopefully have your intrigue up and that disclaimer out of the way, let's start by talking about the exposure triangle. Now, most of us, when we started learning about photography or videography, we were taught that to change the exposure in your image, there's three variables you can use, ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. And this is true. If you change those three variables in your camera, you will change the exposure, making it lighter or darker. But what I want to stress in this video is that we should really stop thinking about ISO and also shutter speed as part of the exposure triangle anymore for shooting video. So let's start with the ISO. Now for most situations, and I will explain some situations where we want to change the ISO, but for most situations, we want to leave our ISO set at whatever the base is for that camera in that log profile. So for example, in shooting C-Log3 on the R5, the R7, you want to have the base ISO at 800. If you're shooting on the FX3, well, now it changed, but depending on what you're shooting in, it's either 640 or 800. Now there's a base ISO and for a reason. This will give you the maximum dynamic range and the best balance of highlights and shadows for that camera in that log profile. So for most situations, we want to shoot at that base ISO and you don't want to change it. And you also don't want to change your shutter speed. You always want to keep the shutter speed at double the frame rate. So essentially, we've removed two of those variables out of our exposure triangle. So you must be thinking, how do we adjust our exposure if we can't use the ISO or the shutter speed anymore? Well, we're going to use the aperture because that'll control the amount of light that gets to the sensor. So you want to set your aperture based on the desired depth of field that you're looking for. Then use either ND filters or lighting to get the rest of the exposure. So really the, the exposure triangle now is aperture, ND filters, and lighting. You're not going to be changing the ISO for most situations and you're not going to be changing the shutter speed. So now that I just got through talking about the importance of not changing your shutter speed or the ISO from your base ISO, let's talk about when you actually should change your ISO. The first example is going to be if your camera has a dual base ISO system, and there's a lot of cameras that do that. For example, the a7S III and the FX3 have a dual base ISO of a low base of 640 and a high base of 12,800. If you're shooting in Cine EI on the FX3 or the FX6, it has dual base ISOs of 800 and 12,800. The Canon R5C in C-Log3 has dual base ISOs of 800 and 3,200. So if you're in a really dark situation and you really need to bump up the exposure, go to that high base and then stay there. Now, there's a couple of other situations where you might want to change the ISO off of one of those bases, and that's really what I want to talk about here because this is something that I think is very different and most people don't know about. So if you're in a very dark or very bright situation, you may want to change your ISO. Most of us know that if we lower our ISO, what happens is that we lower the gain of the camera. So what happens there is that the exposure gets darker and the noise gets lower. If we raise the ISO of the camera, what happens there is we're increasing the gain of the system. So we are getting a brighter image, but we're also getting more noise. And most of us are trying to keep the noise down as much as possible. So this is where it's counterintuitive. In a very dark situation without strong highlights, like I am right now, right? There's nothing really, really bright in this shot here. I'm actually going to lower the ISO. Let me say that again. In very dark situations, you want to lower the ISO. So this is backwards from what, I, what we're all been taught when we started. When it's dark, you want to raise your ISO to increase the exposure. Now, the reason for this is that I want to actually increase the sensitivity of my image in the dark parts. So by changing my ISO lower, I'm shifting some of the dynamic range from the highlights where I don't need it to the shadows where I do need it. And it also lowers the noise. So I'm going to show you some examples here to demonstrate this. But right now, I'm shooting on the C70 and C-Log2. And right now, I am shooting at ISO 400 and f2.5. Now, the base ISO of this camera in C-Log2 is 800. So let me switch it over to 800, and I'll also adjust the aperture to match so the exposure should be the same. 
Now I have the ISO at 800 and the aperture set at 3.5. So what I did was I increased the exposure by one stop of the ISO going from 400 to 800. And I also then had to close down my aperture by one stop going from 2.5 to 3.5. So I have the same exposure. Now on the C70, it has great control over noise. So there's probably not that much of a difference here, but I have been shooting everything in my studio lately at 400 just to lower the noise a little bit. Now, the opposite is also true here where we can actually, in very bright situations where you don't have any shadows, you can actually raise the ISO and then you can capture more information in the highlights. But I generally do not recommend doing that because for the most part, there's gonna always gonna be some shadows and also these cameras do really well in maintaining highlights. So as long as you don't overexpose the image, uh, I you're usually in good shape. I wouldn't recommend raising the ISO above the base. So in certain situations, you can get a cleaner image by lowering the ISO like one stop. So from like 800 to 400. So in these examples here, because I have a few that I wanna show you this, I'm gonna use three different cameras. I'm gonna use the R5, the R7, and the FX3 to demonstrate this. So it doesn't matter what brand you're shooting on. And for all these examples here, I'm just gonna use a gray card. Hopefully you guys have one of these, if not, they're not expensive, super handy for getting white balance, but also for getting proper exposure. And what I'll be using is a gray card and zebras in the cameras to get proper exposure. So on the R5 and the R7, I'll be shooting in C-Log3, so I wanna aim for a um, exposure of around 35% using zebras. And then the FX3, I'm not gonna use Cine EI because if you use Cine EI, you can't actually change the ISO. So I'm putting it in flexible ISO mode in S-Log3, and that has a base of 640, and for that, with the LUT applied, I know there's a lot of variables here, I'll be aiming for a exposure of 45%. So you'll see in this where I'll change the ISO and also change the aperture to maintain exposure. So take a look here and you'll see the differences of at the noise level for these shots. And keep in mind, again, this is a darker situation, a little bit moodier where I don't have a lot of highlights. <laughs> Hopefully you're able to see from those examples that as I lowered the ISO and then used the aperture to control the exposure, I actually got less noise in my image. And I'm not sure how much of that came through on YouTube with the compression, but it is also very subtle on some of these cameras because they're already so clean at that base ISO. Now I can't stress this enough that sometimes this is not a good idea to do this and that this is really a more advanced technique. But what I'm trying to say here is that if you cannot get proper exposure at a lower ISO, then you're gonna cause more damage than it's worth. So if you drop your ISO, make sure you can get the proper exposure based on changing the aperture, ND, and lighting. Because if you don't, you'll underexpose your image, and then when you raise up the exposure in post, you actually have more noise. So it's better to shoot at the, at the base ISO and get the proper exposure. So now what about those bright situations? Because I didn't do any examples here. And as I said earlier, I really don't recommend that you raise your ISO above the base. And as I said earlier, there's a lot of latitude in the highlights with a lot of these log um, curves. So basically if you're outside and it's really bright, I recommend that you stick at the base ISO. The only time that you wanna lower it is like I said, in these darker sort of moodier situations without strong highlights. I do recommend that you experiment with this a little bit, but don't do it when you're relying on the footage, like on client jobs, or if you're recording stuff that you, you can't screw up. Practice with this stuff, see what you think, 
Every camera is a little bit different. Uh, I usually don't recommend dropping it down uh, below one stop. So for example, on those Canon cameras from 800 to 400 or on the Sony cameras from like 640 to 320. But again, it's subtle and it's one of those things that is counterintuitive and I really wanted to share with you because it's uh, it's fun to nerd out about this stuff. If you'd like to learn more about exposing S-Log3 or all the details about how CineEI works on the FX3, Go check out these videos here. There's a lot of great information in there. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Please hit subscribe down below. We greatly appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next one.